A few days ago, I had the honor of playing the world champion Magnus Carlsen in a park in Madrid, Spain. Now, after I played that game, I got a lot of comments asking, Anna, why did you not take a free rook? Anna, why did you not play this? Why did you not play that? And so I thought I'm gonna go ahead and do a video where I explain my moves to you so that uh, hopefully the game becomes a little bit more clear to you. I was playing with the black pieces against Magnus Carlsen and yeah, I'm gonna be going through all the moves. So Magnus started with d4. I went knight f6, c4 and e6. Now in this position, there's a million different things that you can play. He opted for knight f3 and d5. Now this is uh, this is a very common, uh, I mean, position. There's a queen's gambit decline. And here, there's a million things, once again, that white can do. And he opted to go for g3, which is called the Catalan. Now, the idea of the Catalan is just to bring the bishop out to g2, castle, and just put a little bit of extra pressure towards d5. So, uh, you just want to fianchet the bishop as white. So, what I typically play against the Catalan is bishop b4 check. Now, the idea of this move, it looks a little bit strange because there's a million things that white can do to cover the check. But the idea is that I'm basically asking white to put their pieces in a little bit of a weird position. If, for instance, white goes here, bishop d2, I would go back to either d6 or e7, one of these places. And what I'm basically saying now is that this bishop is really badly placed on d2. And you're going to have to move this bishop out at some point, And then I would have gained the tempo by already having my bishop on e7. So, uh, that is idea, but uh, he went for knight c3 instead of uh, bishop d2, and, well, I mean, this is also just, uh, this is also a very common move, um, and here what we have is that I already have a pin, so we can say that now my bishop on b4 is pretty good placed because I'm pinning this knight over here. So I took the pawn on c4, um, and this is because... Well, now that this knight is pinned, I might at some point be able to go b5, maybe defend the pawn, etc. Um, so yeah, I just took that pawn. Bishop g2 was played, and here I could have gone for castling. Uh, it probably would have been better to just castle or go knight c6 and just develop. And later, when I've done all of those things, then go knight d5. But I went for knight d5 immediately, and the idea of going knight d5 is that I um, basically asking white. Uh, you know, what they're gonna do with this knight, and I'm, I'm pinning this knight, I'm threatening the knight with two pieces, and if at any point, obviously now it's not possible because the knight is pinned, but if at any point the knight would capture on d5, I would be very happy because I would be able to capture back with my pawn, and then I would have a great center, and my pawn in e5 would be defending the pawn on c4. So, um, I just thought that this knight was pretty well placed, but what we will realize later is that uh, sometimes white can go e4 with a tempo, and then my knight is not so well placed. So it might have been a little bit uh, too early to, to do this move. Um, so bishop d2 was played just to stop the pin, very normal. I castled here, castles, and now I went c6. Now I think that c6 was a bit of a mistake here because I actually want to go c5 in a lot of these positions. I want to go c5 because I have a double pawn right now. My pawn on c4 is not great because, well, it's a double pawn that I have on the c file. So what I want to do is that I want to exchange, um, I want to exchange one of these pawns so that I can just be a pawn up because at this point I'm a pawn up. So I want to go c5. The idea of going c6 was that I wanted to go c6 and then go b5, um, and then control this pawn. But I always need to be careful when I do these things because there is this bishop that's really strong in this diagonal, which is the idea of the Catalan. Um, and a lot of times it's really hard to go for something like this because... Well, because the bishop is pointing towards this rook. So I need to be really careful. Uh, and I think this plan was a little bit too slow. There's also a lot of ways of going a4, uh, threatening this pawn if I go a6. Well, you know, there's some pins going on over here. So I think it would have been best to just try to just try to go c5 immediately. And by going c6, if I ever want to go c5 in the future, I'm going to be, be losing a tempo, um, which, which is a mistake. So I think c6 was a bit wrong. I think I should have maybe just like, gone c5 immediately in this position. But I went c6, and now e4 came. Now, e4 is a really good move because Magnus is basically just taking all my centuries, attacking my knight with the tempo. So I decided to take the knight uh, just so that I would get a move out with the tempo. Pawn takes, and then I went bishop e7. Um, and yeah, now white has been able to get a really nice center, and it's going to be hard for me to go b5, I think. Here, white played a4. The idea of a4 is to stop me from playing b5. Um, if I would go b5 now, well, 
then it would i think that this would just be really bad or really bad but it would at least get quite scary i think because um there might be some positions where you can take take and uh maybe go e4 and open up over here maybe knight e5 here immediately is a good move and right now i'm having a little bit of a hard time taking this knight out so yeah i don't really know i mean maybe maybe could have been an option to go b5 in this position but uh i i thought in the game that it was a little bit scary so I went a5 instead, just because I wanted to stop white from going a5. I felt like if white goes a5, then it might be uh, it might be hard for me to ever go b5, uh, because there's always on passant. So that's why I did that. Um, so I went a5, queen b1 once again. White is just stopping me from going b5, which is what I want to do. I want to go b5 and defend this pawn. Um, and here I went knight a6. And the idea is just that I want to develop my knight, um, and I didn't want to go knight d7 um because well i wanted to go b5 and my plan here was to go knight a6 knight c7 and then b5 but perhaps knight d7 would have been better because this does feel like a more natural square for the knight but yeah i had this i had this idea of going knight c7 just to be able to push b5 and defend this pawn once again my whole idea here is to go b5 and that is why sometimes white doesn't go for e4 because the moment that white goes on to e4 this pawn blocks this bishop which makes it harder for the bishop to attack on this diagonal so knight e5 was played now, the knight is just uh, centralizing itself, and once again, if I go b5 now, this pawn is going to be hanging. So, once again, stopping me from going b5. I went f6 just to attack the knight. I think that f6 might uh, have been a mistake. Um, if I'm going to be completely honest, I missed in this position that my pawn on c4 is just hanging, which is the idea of going knight e5 too, you're just attacking the pawn. So probably in this position, I should have gone c5 immediately, um, because then if knight takes c4, well... Then I can take over here, takes, takes, and I can uh, probably take back with the queen. And this isn't super clear. I mean, white has a lot of peace activity, but at least I'm getting the pawn back. So I think that maybe I should have gone for that. Um, yeah, it, it might have been a better option, but if I'm going to be honest, I just missed that the pawn on c4 was hanging, which is a big mistake. If you're playing as the world champion, you cannot miss that the pawn is hanging. But I, I unfortunately did. I, I just missed it for some reason. Um... So I went f6, and when he played knight takes c4, I was pretty pretty sad because I realized my mistake. Um, and then I went e5 with, with the same idea of, well, now I'm pinning, so I'm pinning the pawn. Uh, I'm pinning, I, I don't think pawn takes pawn is possible because I think bishop e6 is very strong. So I don't think this is possible. Yeah, this is the idea. Uh, I don't think it's possible. Bishop e6 is very strong. I'm threatening the knight, and well, I don't know where the what they're gonna do uh or what he's gonna do because if if something like queen b3 I'll, then i will just go knight c5 and it'll just be very strong and if something like queen a2 um then i can probably just go b5 and just pin the knight and this is just very strong um so yeah this is this is the idea uh yeah so pawn takes pawn was just not possible because of this because of this move bishop e6 so in this position, he went bishop e3 just to get his bishop out of the pin. Um, and here I went bishop e6, just like before. I'm just developing my piece, attacking the knight. He went knight b6, um, which makes a lot of sense attacking my rook. He could probably also have gone d5, which would have been quite annoying because then he would have been attacking my b6, uh, my b6 square with both the bishop and the knight. And maybe even bishop b6 could have been a good option. But also it would have been really annoying because this pawn would have become very strong. I don't know where I'm going to go with the bishop. The issue is that I cannot take on d5 because if I take here, there is bishop b6 um, attacking my queen. And if I go something like uh, queen d7, there's just going to be rook d1. And then this bishop is going to be pinned and I'm going to be losing the piece. So I cannot go for this. So I don't know. I probably would have to go bishop f7. But, I mean, there might even be d6 possible and then rook d1. This could be an option. Or just going, sorry, or just going rook d1 immediately um, and, and threatening to push. So, okay, I guess push immediately is not possible because the knight is hanging. But at some point, I mean, it's going to get very annoying. Uh, but, yeah, rook d1, I think, is a good move just to defend. So, I think that this is just having really strong. That pawn is going to become monstrous. So, yeah, I think that d5 could have been a really good move. But knight d6 was also really annoying. I had to move my rook. To b8, it was the only square for it, and now d5 came. Um, so d5, I felt like, yeah, maybe it was a mistake to take. Maybe I should just have gone 
uh, bishop f7 immediately, but, uh, because I feel like, I feel like taking maybe frees up some diagonals for white, and if takes and takes, at least I'm opening up my rook, which would be pretty good, so could have been a mistake to take. Takes, takes, I want bishop f7 here just to keep the pressure on this pawn on d5, and here I knew that if I let this pawn push, I'm gonna lose the game immediately because this pawn is really strong, and in all endgames, I'm going to have a really bad position because this pawn is going to be defending this this pawn, their uh, protected pass pawn. So I had to be very careful here. So rook d1, I went bishop d6 just to block the pawn from pushing. I thought that was important. Knight c4. Um, and at this point, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying, I'm just hoping that it takes here so that I can take back with my queen because I'm just doing everything to block this pawn. I went here knight c5. Uh, I was just trying to centralize my knight. And maybe stop the bishop from going bishop b6 because that felt like a really annoying move. And here it took on d6. So takes, takes. So queen b5 was played, then rook c8, rook b1, and bishop c uh, bishop e8. I'm just threatening the queen. Now in this position, I think that perhaps it would have been better to go b6 and just defend the pawn instead of going bishop e8, attacking the queen. Um, and giving this pawn because now after b6 I'm actually threatening to go bishop e8 and taking this pawn this is actual what I'm threatening so um I think that it would have been better for me to just defend my pawn first and I mean I feel like this is almost equal um he has the bishop pair but my knight of c5 is really blocking a lot and my my pieces are coordinating really well if bishop takes c5 at any point I'll just take back with the rook an even better idea could perhaps have been for me to go first bishop h5 here because um, this rook is really strong over here because it's defending this pawn and it's forcing the bishop to stay here. Because then if rook over here is something, then I can go b6. And then this is even better because the rook is better placed here than what it is placed on d1. So could have been even stronger to go for something like that. I went for bishop e8 immediately, which I think was a bit too forcing. I took took with the knight, rook c1 just to defend this pawn. And now I went b6, um, queen b4. And yeah, here perhaps it would have been better for me to just to just go back with the knight to go um, knight d5. But I thought that this was okay. I thought it was okay to to take. Um, and also I just I wanted to get into an endgame against Magnus Carlsen, you know. Um, but I, I actually thought that it was okay to take. I thought that my position was was fine here. Knight c3. I knew that this pawn would be very strong, but um. Yeah, I, I, I thought that my pieces were quite active in this position and I had ideas of going bishop f7, e4 and trying to attack this pawn. So rook b2, and here I made a mistake, I went bishop a4. The idea of going bishop a4, well, it was really just to go knight d1. Um, I, 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 I was also trying to stop rook c2, so I was trying to threaten moves like rook d1, I was stopping rook c2. I didn't want white to double up the rooks on the c file. So yeah, those those were my thoughts, but I think that bishop b5 would have been a better move. Threatening to go knight e2, because this is actually a pretty big threat. Um, if, yeah, if something like, uh, I don't really know, king h1 or something, maybe I can go knight e2 anyways. And if we exchange over here, I don't think that I am that much worse, to be honest. Moves such as bishop f1 don't work here, because I have knight takes g3 check. And this bishop is going to be hanging, because otherwise this would be really annoying, because my knight would be pinned. So, um, I think that, yeah, now my plan, I mean, probably here, maybe, yeah, bishop takes b6 is not possible here, because then I just have rook check, and I'm, I'm winning, because it's almost a checkmate. Magnus needs to sacrifice his bishop. And I'm going to have ideas of going rook a8, rook a1, um, moves like this. So actually my pieces are are pretty active and it's hard for, for white to continue. White's plan is, of course, just to push this pawn and try to promote. But let's say it's something like d6 is played. Yeah, okay, this maybe is a good move because it's stopping rook a8 from, from, from happening. But okay, maybe I can just go, maybe I can just go knight d4. This knight is really, uh, really well centered here. And if bishop takes is not possible because I always have rook check and I'm winning the bishop. So yeah, here I think that this is just a really strong knight. Um, and yeah, it's hard for white to continue pushing because my bishop is stopping and my king is going to be quite fast. So I actually think that this is a good position for me. So bishop b5 really, I think, was, was a really important move, uh, which I missed. I went bishop a4. And here, okay, bishop h3 could have been a good idea for white just because 
bishop e6 is coming with a lot of force. My rook is hanging. It's hard for me to, to defend this knight. So maybe bishop h3 would have been a good move. But he went h4 first just to just so that the king would never be in any problems. And here I went for the idea that I was saying. I was trying to go e4 and then try to win this pawn. But um, but but yeah, I I I I. I I think that maybe this is a little bit optimistic um, to go for something like this. Maybe I should just have gone knight d1 immediately and just try to exchange as many pieces as possible. I think that I didn't realize that for me it was important to exchange pieces. So maybe this would have been a better option just to just to really force the exchange. Because if something like this, I think you need to take, take. And then, yeah, where, where do you go? I mean, if something like rook e2 to take back, then I'll just take, take. I'll go rook c1 check. King probably has to go back. And uh, I think I can just go king f7 or king f8. And then just bring my king up. And if I'm able to bring the king to d6, I'm going to have a really good position. Because this pawn is going to get very weak. So maybe this is just the easiest way of equalizing um, to go for something like this. But instead, I went for e4. Um, once again, I think that bishop h3 here was very strong. But he went here for bishop f4. Now this, everybody, is the big moment in the game because I think that <laughs> half of my comments in the video is why did you not go, why did I not go knight e2 check winning the rook? Um, but yeah, because also in this position, Magnus starts saying tactics, tactics. Now, when Magnus said tactics, tactics, he was not referring to knight e2. Knight e2 check, even though, you know, um, just by the bare eye, maybe it looks like you're winning a rook, it does not do anything. It loses a piece. Because after knight e2 check, the rook just takes the knight. And um, I cannot do anything here because if I, well, if I take this rook, then the bishop just takes back and I've just lost the piece and I'm completely losing. So this does not work. Uh, knight e2 does not work. I just hang a piece, basically. And that is because the bishop is defending this rook. Now, the move that he was, that Magnus was referring to was knight takes d5. And here it would definitely be at least equal because I would be getting Magnus's best pawn. This is definitely his best pawn in the whole position. The only pawn that really has any chances of promoting. Um, and the idea is that even though it looks like I'm maybe um, blundering a rook, if bishop takes b8, I have rook takes c1 check. And this is now completely equal material, but uh, it's better for me because... I've won a pawn, I'll be able to go f5, defend this pawn, and my pieces are super active in this position. So um, this is what I had to do, and if I did this, then it would at least have been an equal position. So this was my chance of equalizing the game. I missed knight takes d5, uh, I just missed the idea that bishop takes b, well, that he cannot go bishop takes b8, because I have rook takes c1. And if he just exchanges and exchanges, then my rook is not longer uh, hanging, and after bishop takes e4, Knight takes f4 and pawn takes f4. This is completely equal. Now, probably I would have lost anyways because I was playing as Magnus Carlsen. And I feel like Magnus, I mean, he's, I mean, obviously he's the best chess player in the world, but it feels like he's able to win these sort of positions, which, which are the most equal positions in the world, just because he always has so many tricks and is always, you know, doing the best out of every situation. But this would have definitely been my biggest chance of equalizing the game against Magnus Carlsen. Um, and this is a really big chance that I missed and that's why he was saying tactics tactics in the game I think he actually wanted me to find this but I just missed it I think I got a bit nervous as well uh, I think that if like I would have like really like sat down and like like thought about the game maybe I would have seen this because like when you see it it's really it's relatively easy to see I think but I just I got I was really nervous and um, I mean I was really nervous the whole game and I just missed this this idea but yeah, when I saw it, I, I I understood immediately. So that was a bit a bit of a pity that I missed it. But yeah. Anyways, that's what he was that's uh what he was talking about. So I went rook a8, which is a really bad move because I'm basically not doing anything. And actually, knight takes if uh, knight takes d5 is the only move that equalizes. Any other move loses for me because this pawn is now going to become so strong with this bishop on f4. This bishop on f4 is a monster. So I went rook a8, which is also bad because I'm putting the rook in the same diagonal as the bishop. Um, so d6 was played. I now went knight d1 a few moves too late, but now I could just exchange and then go rook d2. And now this rook over here is really well placed because it's both attacking the knight, but it's also um, helping this pawn to push further. 
So Rook C1, I was just trying to get some counterplay, but now we can see how good it is that he played H4 because now he had a, an escape route for the king. So R King H2, I went Bishop D7 to block the pawn from pushing. Now he could take the pawn on E4. I went F5, which is also a mistake because I'm giving him too many, you know, squares. By going F5, I am giving him all of this diagonal, which is a really great diagonal for the bishop because it's going to help the pawn promote. Which is why he said here that he liked it for him. Um, and then, yeah, check. He went bishop g5. I just kicked away the bishop. Um, I think constantly I should probably have gone knight c3 because I needed to do something with my knight. My knight on d1 is not doing anything. So I probably needed to try to bring the knight into the game to attack the bishop. Maybe try to centralize my knight on e4. Which was also, you know, uh, something that I missed. I needed to do this. So this now just became really bad for me. Um, I was also stopping the idea of rook a2 with the knight on c3, which is also why the knight on c3 would have been a really good move. But rook c8, I was trying to stop the rook from checkmating, of course, in one move. Um, yeah, well, I can, you can also see that if something like, something, okay, let's say I do a random move here. Rook a8 check, rook c8. Um, in this position, um, there is going to be, yeah, there's always bishop f3, but, um, yeah, maybe you can also take here, but I, I think that this is really bad. Bishop f3 is probably the move that there is, because if I go something like b6 in this position, then there is takes, takes, and bishop d1, and this is the same idea as in the game. So there's always that move that I also miss, which obviously Magnus did not miss, but yeah, I, I was just trying to stop the rook from coming in. So bishop f3, I completely missed this idea. And when I move my knight, there is a checkmate. Um, yeah, that is just a really beautiful checkmate. There's nothing I can do. It's literally a checkmate with two bishops. The bishop pair is literally checkmating me. Such a beautiful finish to the game. And as you can see, I cannot like go g6 because if I go g6, my knight is hanging. Which once again, knight c3 would have been really important uh, just to avoid this. Once again, knight, knights on the rim are typically game. But yeah, it finished with this really beautiful checkmate. And well, I could have resigned here, but checkmates are really beautiful. And I wanted to allow him to do a checkmate. So that was the end of the game. And yeah, that was my game against Magnus Carlsen. I was happy that I was able to get some chances. Um, I was happy that I did not lose in less than 20 moves. And uh, yeah, I, I think I had some chances. I wish that I would have seen knight takes d5. That was definitely a biggest chance in the game. Because that would at least have been probably a longer end game where um, I don't know what would have happened. Probably I would have lost, but at least it would have given me the most chances of a draw against the world champion, which would have been, you know, crazy. But I'm really happy that Magnus uh, decided to go to the park. I think it was a really cool opportunity to everyone that was there to be able to play against the world champion. I mean, there were so many Spanish people that are part of, you know, uh, regular clubs in Madrid that got the chance to play against the world champion, which I think is just such an amazing opportunity. And I'm uh, really happy that our world champion wanted to do that. So I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, this analysis of my game against Magnus Carlsen and that, you know, you learned that one or two things and at least it gave you a little bit more of an insight of what I was thinking whilst I was playing this this game against him. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Like and uh, like this video if you enjoyed it and we'll see if I ever get the chance to play Magnus Carlsen again. Bye bye. Bye bye.